Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Hi and welcome to Getting Started Tutorial on C Sharp. C Sharp is a very similar language to C and C++. C Sharp was developed by Microsoft and initially launched in 2002. It has gone through many variations since then and the current stable version is C Sharp 10 and a new C Sharp 11 is in beta. Before we get started, you will need a code editor to test your code. So it can be either offline or online. So I'm going with an online C Sharp code editor from W3 School. I'll leave the link in description. If you're planning to go with an offline editor, I'll suggest Visual Studio Code. There are some basic building blocks of C Sharp that you should know about. So let's start with namespace. Namespace is a bunch of pre-written code that you can use in your code directly. For example, if you want to print something on the console, you have to use a function called write line. Now this write line is available in the namespace system. So if you don't add the namespace system to your code, you won't be able to use this function write line. To add a namespace to your code, you have to use the keyword using. So let's go to our online code editor and add a namespace. So let's add using system and then you have to give us semicolon. So now we have added a namespace called system to your code. Next you need to create a class. A class is basically a collection of your code. So there can be more than one class in a single code. So to create a class you have to use the keyword class and it's C in small letters, so class, and then you have to give the name of the class. So I'll be giving my class. And then all your code within the class should be inside the curly braces. In order to better understand what a class is, think of your codes as small blocks. Class is a big container that has all your small blocks. So you can have more than one container, but it is a way to group your similar codes. Now we have created a class called my class. Inside the class, you can declare variables, you can create methods or functions, and then you can create loops and logics. So first let's try to declare a new variable. Variables in your code will hold the values and the type of value will be defined by the data type of the variable. So data type can be an integer, float, string, character, and a lot more. But these are the basic used data types. So let's go ahead and create a variable of type string and give it a name Vinix Studio. So you have to give the data type first, string, and then you have to give the name of the variable, that is my name. And then you have to assign it. A string should be assigned within double quotes, so it is YNX Studio. Now I have created a variable called my name and assigned YNX Studio as the value to it. Next, every class should have a main function and the main function is called by default. Functions inside a class can be public or private. If a function is public, then it can be accessed by other classes. And if it is private, then it can be accessed only by objects inside the class. By default, a function is always set to private. A function of a class can also return a variable and also take variables as input. So we will not be taking any variables as of now. So but the return type will be void. And it, the name of the main function should be main with M in capital letters and any arguments should be inside the brackets. All your codes that will be inside the function should be inside this curly braces. So what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to print the name onto the console. So it should be console dot right line and then we'll call it as my name will pass the variable my name.
Now, the code looks all good, but there are a few issues with this code. First thing, you need an object of the class to reference the non-static variables or methods inside the class. So both string and this method main are non-static. We need to create a new object for the class in order to reference my name. So to create a new object, you just have to say my class, the class name. Then you have to give the object name. Let's call it A. It's equal to new my class. And then semicolon. So now you have created an object. And then in order to access the variable, you have to just use this object like A dot my name. And the other problem with this script is all main functions inside a class should be of type static. Static void main. What I mean by static is this method can be accessed without an object of the class. So all main functions inside a class should be of type static. So now our code is ready. Let's run the code. And as you can see, the data inside the variable is printed on our console. So you have created your first code. Next, we'll learn about some basic operations and loops in C sharp. So the plus sign is used for addition. The minus sign is used for subtraction. And the star sign is used for multiplication. The slash is used for division. And the percentage symbol is used for modulo operator. Now the same operator can be used in a different form for comparison. For example, the equal to sign, if one equal to is used, it is basically assigning the value. If two equal to are used, then it is basically comparison. You can use this comparisons depending on your data type. Greater than and less than can be used for only integers and float. You cannot use it for booleans. Similarly, the AND operator and the OR operator cannot be used for integers and floats. It can only be used for booleans. Now to test it out, let's go to our code and then create another string. And let's call it my new name, which is equal to, and I'm going to assign the same Wynix Studio to it. I'm going to use an if statement to compare my old name is equal to my new name. An if statement will be a dot my name is equal to equal to. If you use a single equal to, it is basically assigning. So for comparing, you have to use two equal to's a dot my new name. And then open braces, curly braces, close curly braces. So now I have an if statement. If both the names are equal, then it will print my name. Otherwise, it won't print. Let's run the code. So since both the names were the same, it has printed Wynix Studio. Now let's remove the O from the new name and then run it again. So it should not print anything. The console should be empty. So the console is empty. Let's go ahead and add the O to it. And in place of if, let's use while. Now the difference between if and while is, if will be executed only once, but in case of while, till the condition is true, it will go on printing Wynix Studio. So let's go ahead and run the game. As you can see in the console, it's going on printing Wynix Studio. Now let's test out one more loop called the for loop. So let's remove all the code inside our main. And then let's say int i equal to 0. So we are declaring a new variable of type integer and assigning the value to 0. And let's say for loop. Inside the for loop, the first one should be an initialization. So we have to say int j equal to 0. And the next should be the condition. 
So let's say j is less than 5 and then it should be increment. So j plus plus. Now let's increment i for every loop. So i plus plus. And then after the for loop, let's just print to console. Console dot right line i semicolon. Now these two are not required, so we will delete it. I'll run the code. So i was initially 0 and the for loop has run 5 times and incremented the value of i. So the final value of i is 5. So now we have learned about loops, operators, data types, classes and methods. So these are the basic building blocks of C sharp and you should be able to write some basic codes with this. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and try something new. And if you're learning C sharp to learn Unity game engine, then check out our tutorial on basic Unity scripting. See you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.